we are not there yet where you know humans can be replaced by an ai so so it's very important and essential to have a teacher who's trained who has the intention motivation and the skill set to deliver good quality classes Hi everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Abhinav and I work with Planet Spark. Last few weeks have been super busy. We are getting tremendous response from parents on life skill based classes and for academic support as well. We believe learning should never stop and it's not stopping. Planet Spark is now teaching students across the globe at their home inside their devices and our teachers are ensuring that students are learning with fun at the ease of their home safely with this spirit we start our episode 2 of coffee with the change makers today i have very special guests very good friends of mine chitrak shrivastav and sanchita bhatia they are the co-founders of uh, a design studio called panch and clan they have extensively worked with kids uh, especially k5 Uh, working on storyboards concept art uh, game designs and have lots of insights to share with us today hi sanchita hi chitrak welcome to the show please how are you hi we're good how are you great great hi chitrak thank you for having us on the show yes thank you so yeah. much right but today's talk is edutainment and how we can make learning more fun for kids and you guys have been doing some interesting work around that uh, so we'll talk about that and of course we would love to know what uh, you guys do at pension clan so we'll start off with that and uh, i hope we have a good conversation today uh, so why don't chitra or sanchita uh, one of you take the lead and uh, help me understand what are you guys doing Uh, okay so at panchan clan we primarily provide services in three areas concept art game design and storytelling so um i just a bit of background about how we started so both of us uh, were uh, uh, right before we started we were uh, both of us were working together on a product for kids which was like a subscription box box sort of thing and uh, uh, it was an entertainment uh, based product which uh, had to which uh, which had a focus on developing uh, the questions uh, the intelligence question emotional question then all those kind of things and so basically we connected with each other uh, while we were in the uh, early childhood education field and uh, demonetization happened and both of us lost our jobs and so we decided to start our studio and uh, one of the, so we provide services in concept art storytelling and game design so uh, concept art uh, just to give you a brief idea is what happens before a movie or an animation gets made it's the concept or the pre production phase of that uh, uh, of anything that you want to design then uh, by storytelling we mean that we uh, create cre- uh, creative content for let's say uh, we we could Uh, write songs for children we could do script writing for animation anything uh, related to something creative and uh, by game design well that's pretty obvious so um, yeah so but at the core of what we do we do a lot of work for uh, for very uh, early ages of children and uh, we also come from a background which is uh, education based so that's how all these things connect for us fantastic all right and chitra i have always been a fan of your concept art uh, could you please help us uh, understand how how it all started and uh, and uh, you know how how does it fit into what i am working with and what can i take away from you today uh yeah so um i have all i've been in design for you know 10 years now as a student like starting as a student of course and i studied product design and i uh, went into publishing and i couldn't find something that i really did 
enjoy doing. So I, uh, I was, while I was working in DK at, at a point, I thought, you know, and I was in the licensing department there. So I used to see all of these books of like Star Wars, uh, Marvel, DC, and these are the books, encyclopedia, sticker books that we would create for them. And I decided, you know, this is, I want to create this work. <laughs> and um, so I'd studied concept art as a, um, as a thing. And I started doing this when I, uh, when I finally studied that I went into, somehow I landed into the education sector, right? Uh, and uh, we prepared games, which we actually worked together on, you and I. Uh, and uh, following that, I think somehow my, all of this and everything just fit into this domain, the children's education domain. And once I've started working, I always felt that, you know, this is something that I uh, want to continue doing, uh, creating fun stuff for children. And uh, whether it's hardcore education or just like simple games or, uh, you know, making cartoon series for kids. Those are things that I'm, I'm really passionate about. And yeah, so Sanchita as well is something we, we kind of relate to the same thing over there. And that's how we were able to come together to create Panchan Clan as well. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, so what I've realized is that uh, there has to be a fine balance between, uh, you know, the entertainment part and the education part uh, in any sort of academic delivery. So the learning outcome that we want to achieve through the entertainment part, whether it be good design or, you know, uh, uh, gamification of it. Uh, so, uh, which brings me to the three E's with Sanchita, uh, we all were talking about. Uh, so, uh, how, how do you see that fits in? What, what, is, what are your thoughts around that balance? And um, uh, if you could share some of the examples you might have seen which were working uh, while, while doing this. Teaching children is uh, considered different from engaging children sometimes. Right. But actually, both of those things should be going hand in hand. Um, if you want to spark the, that learning spark in a child, uh, it will go farther than trying to tell a child that, you know, okay, study this, you know, learn this, uh, read this and, you know, remember it. If, you, if you're able to create something that uh, makes the child want to... Uh, learn by himself or herself that will go much farther than trying to teach him something. So uh, when we talk about the three big E's, we're talking about entertainment, engagement and education. So education does not have to be without uh, engagement or it does not have to be without entertainment. All those three things can come together. That's what we feel and that's what we try to do when we are creating content or design when it comes, when it's for children. Like I'll give you an example from my own life. Uh, as a child, I used to hate, I absolutely hate history, right? It's, uh, unless someone is really passionate about those stuff, it's very difficult to relate to it because it's, uh, when we used to study in it in school, it was all just, a kind of like data that was just thrown on you. Uh, and I couldn't relate to it uh, at all. So over the, and like currently I use a lot of historical stuff. Like we use a lot of historical stuff to get inspiration from or things that we like. So I actually enjoy doing, you know, I enjoy reading about history. I enjoy reading about what happened in history and really applying it. And because now I know how, that, whatever I'm studying is I'm going to be able to apply it. I'm already engaging with that content that I'm consuming. So it becomes thousand more times exciting for me. And you know, if, if it's not if exciting to you, like as an adult, it's not even going to be exciting for a kid to read or learn something. So, I mean, yeah, so yeah, it has to be like really more, much more engaging for kids than, uh, it is for you. Right. And uh, agreed. Same here. I never liked history. It was all about dates, uh, remembering dates. And, uh, you know, it was always a burden it, uh, and typical example of rote learning. However, now I have Netflix and, uh, you know, all these uh, platforms where 
I think uh, we, we all are fond of documentaries and, you know, we, I have seen World War. I, I was never interested in World War II. I've seen that documentary and several other, uh, you know, historical milestones that I am aware of now because of entertainment being a part of it. So, uh, yeah, that yeah. makes And uh, this is what we are doing at Planet Spark. We are trying to make learning fun and uh, we are uh, leveraging learning outcomes uh, uh, delivered by teachers through technology. Through, uh, through bringing the fun element and through gamification. So these are the three principles that really help us, you know, good content, which is gamified, which is fun to, uh, you know, consume while uh, ensuring that there is a teacher who always, uh, uh, you know, uh, co coordinates and monitors and f f felicitates the learning process. And that is very important, which brings me to an interesting point, uh, the lockdown, the reason why we all are sitting on Zoom and talking and not with each other. Uh, this lockdown had a really big impact on, uh, you know, the way students were learning and somehow it has unlocked certain, uh, you know, boundaries which were preventing us to reach uh, to each and every home and people have started accepting it. So. Have you guys also experienced something of this sort uh, where lockdown really pumping up the uh, certain aspects of learning uh, happening around you? I think one of the things that uh, we uh, think has should happen, we don't know yet if it's happened, is that uh, uh, there is a, there is obviously a big shift in terms of demand for digital content now, uh, especially in the education field. And uh, earlier it was like an add-on, like a luxury sort of thing that you were doing, that your school had these uh, digital, the digital medium available and it was a handholder for what was happening in the classrooms. But now that is become the main source of consumption when it comes to education. Sure, like I, one thing is that I agree with Sanchit on this, but uh, the other side of uh, looking into this like new digital format of uh, teaching is that uh, like uh, interesting things are coming up. We always expect take internet and digital media as uh, for granted, right? But there are so many cases where right now internet is also in accessible even for students right uh, a good example is uh, you know we, we teach a student here and he's facing issues uh, where he has to present his work to a client here and uh, it becomes difficult for him because he doesn't have internet accessibility that he can present directly to a client on a video call so i think those are things like as uh, in in terms of infrastructure also those are things that will have to be developed for uh, for us as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully those are the things that we'll be taking care of. But also it has really, like you said, uh, really jump-started this whole digital age altogether uh, because everyone is getting into a digital platform now. And uh, yeah, it's just going to, the demand for it is also going to keep increasing. And hopefully the quality is also going to push be pushed because of that right right agreed and uh, uh, so so the last point uh, that i wanted to touch was uh, 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 you know how uh, concept art in general and you know the gamification of uh, gamification of the whole concept created by uh, uh, by the the developers or or the designers or or the whole uh, spectrum of people who work towards making a successful uh, successful learning module. And we have worked together on, uh, on some of the modules. So what do you think uh, had worked for kids in terms of learning? Do they enjoy uh, more relatable content? Do, we, do they enjoy the content which, uh, which they could engage more with? What, what is it that you think, uh, you know, kids of the age group grade, let's say one to eight, what do they enjoy the most? What works with them? And uh, uh, any observations around that, uh, that you might have come across with? I think one thing that we uh, have observed as creators of content is that fun is universal. All right. Mm, what, what, what I mean by, by that is that... Uh, 
uh, we it, it can happen that we are creating content for kids as adults so uh, we have this perspective that you know uh, that it uh, if it's colorful if it's if it's got all the learning outcomes you know you've ticked it off so that's enough you know it, it'll engage the child but the uh, the odd thing is that if it's not seeming fun to you as an adult it it will definitely not be fun for the child so uh, instead of thinking like an adult creating for a child that okay you know that this is this child is this this age or that age you actually have to think like that child like uh, this is the this is what i used to enjoy at that age and even if you are a grown up you still be able to identify what if it's fun or not because fun is universal so if you as an adult are looking at the final result and it is educational but not fun it is highly unlikely that the child will find it fun so uh, and we have personally observed that we when we enjoy making something uh, we are much more sure that somebody will enjoy consuming it yeah. so that's one thing that we've observed that regardless of what age group you know uh, and uh, it it can seem that you know the higher the age group gets like if you're in gr- grade 1 to 8 that uh, you know you have to be much more education focused but all these things can go hand in hand it doesn't have to be that you know you have to take the fun out of it so that it it's like le- it enables the learning i'll give you a very good example uh, uh when i was had just started working uh, as a designer i was working at this uh, form called uh, January design and we were building these craft kits for kids at that time and uh, we would come up with all these ideas about uh, how what these craft kits would be and we would think of okay, okay, these are fun ideas and we'd come like 10 15 ideas whatever right but my uh, my boss's uh, daughter would come in who was i think uh, like maybe 8 10 years old at that time she would come in and she's like, oh yeah, these are, these are not fun ideas. <laughs> and uh, then, then we, she would actually give us uh, ideas to how to approach this. This seems fun. This seems really nice. And we would incorporate that, uh, those things into our uh, design. And, you know, the end result was, was obviously more fun for children as opposed to what we thought was fun right. uh, for them. Right. So, so uh, that bring, brings me to an, uh, an interesting point that user research, I think, is very important uh, here. And especially there are design mm. aspects, there are academic aspects, uh, and they both go together. So what approach do you guys take while uh, designing the education products and what works? Uh, because I think that's important. Uh, and you would agree to that. Yes, user research is obviously uh, very important. We don't always have access to the user uh, when we're working on projects on our own because uh, most of the work that we do is uh, for the clients. So we end up creating stuff and the client gets it, gets it, gets it tested on their own end. So uh, oftentimes we'll, we'll, we create something with our the best understanding we have and the user testing will get done we don't get to witness it but we get the feedback and then we incorporate it but yes user testing has to be done the few times that i have been part of uh, like a live user test where i've seen you know these very scared little kids three to four years old uh, you know they're being told the story and uh, you if, when you get to watch them enjoy a character you've made or a story you've written and what they're able to understand what they're not able to understand it's very easy to kind of you know detach yourself from what you've made and be able to step back and say, okay, this is working, this is not working. Otherwise, if you don't get into the user research, then you can be very uh, passionately saying, no, this is, I have created it, this is correct, and this will work. But when you actually see, go and see the kids, you know, they, like, uh, I'll give an example. I was working at Sesame Workshop uh, India, and uh, I had created this storybook uh, for a project funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And it was to teach the kids uh, uh, healthy sanitation uh, and um, 
to, to wash their hands, to wear slippers, to the toilet, so healthy toileting practices and sanitation. So uh, I, I had created all these characters like Sabun Sipahi and uh, Lala Lota. So, you know, all the things that were part of the thing that you have to carry water in the mug. So I made the mug into a character. So it was Lala Lota. And uh, you have to take the soap, you have to wash your hands with the soap. So you have Sabun Sipahi and Pani Rani protecting you and things like that. And then when we tested it on the kids, they didn't know what Lota was. Uh, part of the so it was actually translated into four or five languages but in Hindi they did not know Lota so then we ended up changing it to Magga Mama so those kind of things you know it's it's uh, it's very small but it makes a huge difference and it's yeah. very important that's insightful and uh, agree totally agree that uh, uh, you know we as uh, when we are creating the content we really get stuck uh, and I'm just summarizing we just get stuck with the idea and uh, we feel no this is the best that we could do and and then the reality changes when we really go and test it with students we give the content to them and then uh, the way they react and the way they give they, they, some of them give really good feedback which is very direct also uh, which which uh, uh, I have experienced and Chitrak and I have done a lot of testing together. I think almost uh, one year we had test, uh, spent testing a product and, uh, and and we both used to, uh, I think, you know, get uh, uh, get really surprised and, uh, and there were a lot of uh, learning experiences happening while we were inside schools testing the products with, you know, 60, 70 kids taking them uh, together. So, so. Uh, I had my insights on the learning bit on how the you know content has to be presented, how it has to be broken up, you know, into learning outcomes and and the aim of the class. However, Chitrak had uh, uh, you know uh, insights more towards the design and how the whole gamification part and the journey of a child in the application that we were testing. Uh, so, so I think both of us really learned a lot uh, from there and Sanchita. Uh, definitely agree that this is a very interesting example of uh, you know changing the word Lota to Magga uh, because that's more relatable. So uh, yeah, any anything else, Chitrak? Any other example that's coming off the top of head in, in terms of uh, user feedback? I think again, it's like we were just discussing this yesterday. I think me and Sanjita. Uh, and I I know that this has happened with us also. You know. That, uh, mm -hmm. We had this whole idea that the content was being made in a like a typical English or a Hindi format, and then you understand that there is a difference between how spoken English is and a written yeah. English is. Uh, and while we write in a manner, we not do not necessarily talk that way, and that can be again disconnecting for the child to see to read. And so uh, these are things that we also you know have a number of times gone into where you have to make the content more uh, understandable in a way that you that it seems more real rather than uh, you know sounding like something from uh, really hardcore uh, language documents like you know something from ancient Indian text or something from <laughs> Oxford dictionary or something <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. It has to be relatable. Like it should be fun for them. They should. They should enjoy learning, and it should not be boring. I think we've we've all uh, uh, read and learned the boring way when we were kids. So I think that that's on us to you know change the way at least for for the next coming generations. Uh, there are a lot of learnings that we have had uh, from past from the typical classrooms and uh, remember uh, from a conference somebody was presenting a PPT where they showed two pictures of classroom to us. One was a Victorian era classroom, you know, 20 kids sitting in a class, a uh, black and white picture and the other one was uh, a colored picture of a 21st century classroom and same 20 kids sitting in the class in benches and reading the textbooks. So uh, apart from the color theme and, and the, the, the brightness of the picture, there was no literal difference in the classes visually, right? So, so which brings me to the point that, uh, you know, we have to do something different uh, now and not carry uh, the burden or, or the, you know, nuances that had to be solved uh, eventually. So, so Sanchita, do you have any thoughts on that? What, what could be done uh, differently now 
to ensure that uh, there is a there's a change and and we are using technology effectively or design or anything that compri comprises of uh, a learning product yeah so i think uh, the digital medium should not mimic the typical classroom uh, the education system is we we all know when the key we have known known for the last 50 years we've known uh, we know it right now that it's outdated and uh, now if we have to shift into the digital medium this opportunity has presented itself uh, i can sit and i can just consume educational edu and it's it's not even like entertainment focused it's actually educational but it's so well done i can sit and watch those videos all day every day and not get bored so uh, those those kind of things need to get more mainstream into the actual education uh, field and uh, that will hold a child's attention and uh, make him want to learn and yeah so that's i think that's what we would really one going forward completely agreed and uh, yeah so that's what we are doing at planet spark we are trying to rejig the uh, you know the the nuances and the issues that we had been observing and researching on and and uh, uh, currently we are focusing on you know skill based uh, uh, programs where where students can learn one essential skill over uh, over online classes and uh, you know we have teachers who go through a training program uh, we have the content built in house where uh, where that content is actually used by the teachers because we are not there yet where you no know, humans can be replaced by an ai so so it's very important and essential to have a teacher who's trained who has the intention motivation and the skill set to deliver good quality classes and then the content and uh, you know comes in which supports the teacher to in order to you know get better learning outcomes from a normal typical class and now that it has come online we are seeing really good traction we have uh, uh, we have uh, you know cro uh, uh, crossed all the rec records and and now uh, now planet spark is serving uh, online classes throughout the country and it's really good uh, and and we are very very happy uh, with the way parents are actually accepting the quality learning material now and they are actually crossing the boundaries and taking the initiative to you know open their laptops or mobile phones or whatever they have at their disposal and and you know uh, not hesitating at all from taking the online classes uh, yeah so that's yeah, what yeah whatever we have whatever we have heard about planet spark is definitely sounds really exciting to talk about everything that we were we are talking about in this video it seems to have a lot of those features so uh, it sounds really um, like it's doing something different thank you sanjita and thanks chitra thank you so much guys for coming in and uh, you guys are doing fantastic work at panchan clan and i am a fan of uh, your work and i keep following you uh, and and i keep seeing a lot of uh, it on social media these days so kudos to that and uh, uh, it was really fun talking to yeah. both of you all right thank you uh, abhinav for having us we also had a lot of fun thank you chitrak